Okay, welcome and hello everyone. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. We're a couple of seconds away from the durable goods orders uh, report for the U.S. Good to be here with you guys, Aurelian, Bernard, Christian, Eileen. Good morning to everyone, Kyle, Nano, Vesk. All right, and survey says 2%, much stronger than expected. So we were looking for a drawdown of 0.4%. You're seeing that the dollar index is at resistance here. So we'll see if this is enough fuel to get us right through that 11,942 target. Uh, durable goods X transport, if you strip that out, still coming in stronger than expected at 0.6%. The big uh, gain or the big uh, upset here or surprise, I would say, would be this. So you get a nice upward revision across the board of all of last month's blowout numbers. So from 3.4%, we upgraded to 4.1, 0 0.8 on the next transport to a full 1%. Non-goods orders non-defense, or capital goods non-defense rather, excuse me, which is a good uh, gauge of business investment, really strong, 2.2% and upward revision there. So you're seeing the dollar index uh, testing resistance right now. Here's relative performance on the greenback ahead of this read. Okay, so you see at the CAD, Kiwi and Aussie are all stronger in the session. Pound, Yen, Swissy, and all the European counterparts much lower on the session. So we'll see uh, near-term resistance here, like I said, for the dollar index. Here's what we look like on the charts. So this was charted, or this was posted on last night's radar charts, and we noted that this thing was coming right back into this 902 resistance range. And if we saw a topside break, that would essentially validate a rally into this median line which comes off the high you also have the 100 day moving average right there 11,921 so we broke right through that range oh my charts want to freeze here's the live charts look like on dollar index at this point so we made it through that median line look at this point momentum still hasn't broken that trigger break that we highlighted so as far as the index is concerned, again, we use this as a really good gauge of base dollar movements. We'll be watching this into the close today. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do get some kickback here, but if we do close above this median line, expect a little bit more upside. Uh, there is a trend line right off the highs, which comes into view right just a little bit higher from where we are right now. And that lines up perfectly with the monthly opening range low. And that essentially came in on that swing day that we made that outside reversal. So maybe a little bit more to go on the upside here for the dollar index, but uh, looking for near-term resistance heading higher. Again, here's what that scalp chart looks like. So there's that swing low, 11,950, a little bit higher from where we are right now. Major key resistance is still way up here, 11,980, 11,992. Remember, we talked about this region for a while. It was a major key support as it stands right now. So happens that it's the upper median line parallel for that same formation to the downside. So um, if we break through those lows, again, we're looking for resistance right about where we are now. Uh, that would be the subsequent top side objective. Any questions on the dollar index before we move on? Again, just a review here, um, you know, I don't really actively scalp this, obviously, because we're on shore here in the United States, but a good gauge of dollar movements. So let's jump into yesterday's uh, update on the intraday side of things. First up was Euro dollar. So <clears throat> we opened up Asia, or essentially into the open of Asia, we spiked right into resistance. And... Uh, Euro Oz, Euro Dollar, um, dabbled in Dollar Yen, but not as much, are pretty much the focus three that we've been all over. Here's what Euro Dollar looked like on the daily, and here's what it looked like yesterday. Okay, so we closed below the median line off the lows. We talked about that yesterday. Uh, the drawdown yesterday actually offered a great opportunity to get long. So actually, we played some long exposure into that near-term resistance. We closed back below the median line extending off of the June or July low, rather. So at that point, again, we broke below the invalidation level. You look to sell rallies. We opened up Asia right at the highs, or when we spiked into the highs, you got a nice short trigger in momentum, and um, you know shorts were were issued at that point. So 
as we said in the uh, PC yesterday, we were holding shorts off that, looking for about 32 pips per scalp. Um, you know, on the downside, you're looking for major key support at 1465. Here's what the scalp looked like yesterday. Beyond 1465, which was the bearish invalidation level, or the bullish, excuse me, invalidation level, you're looking for this region right here. 113.67, 113.60. Uh, you have the median line off the lows and a 618 extension that we've already pivoted on and capped last Friday's advance. Here's what it looks like now in Euro dollar. All right, so wow. All right, so we actually we just came into that target right now on this print. And at this point, you look for some near-term support. Uh, there was a lot of really strong signals on this. And guys, I don't want to get you too uh, excited. I don't want to say the word excited. I don't want to get you too habitual about looking deeper than a five-minute chart. But in fact, on a lot of these trades, when the ATR is expanding, a lot of the triggers have actually been working much stronger on a one-minute chart. Now, I know if you get too granular, guys, you know, you start to lose focus, larger 20 pip moves start to look like a thousand pips on a one minute chart. Um, so it definitely leads to some chasing and some bad behaviors. But when you're looking for the initial entry, um, at least over the last couple of days, as we've seen this volatility really surge, it's actually been a really strong, uh, a really strong trigger for me. So we'll go over that in just a moment. But um, at this point, like I said, look for some near term support. Again, if we zoom out real quick to give you a broader view of what this looks like, you can see a little bit clearer the support structure that we're testing right now. Okay, um, 130, 113.28 or so, I think it might change at this point, is the 200-day moving average. It's at 113.23 at this point, so let's drop that down. Uh, is a 200-day moving average. So that would be your initial downside target if we break beyond here, followed by that sliding parallel uh, from the lows off the fourth of the month that offered a really nice pivot here earlier in the in the month. Um, as I said, momentum is testing 30. You're at support. Uh, that took that last stretch actually took us out of all the rest. But um, That's the outlook for the euro dollar. So look for a small bounce here. What we would need to get back on the resistance side would need to be a break back above the former invalidation level. And that basically takes you up into 1465. Uh, Mark Haverman, uh, good morning. Eileen, sorry, I missed your comments earlier. Good morning. Great to see you guys. You think we get a break of some sort uh, in the U.S. session? Depeche, he's saying commodity block not doing much today. Uh, do you think we get a break in the, in the, of sorts in the U.S. session? We'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, I'm not really interested in, per se in playing Aussie or Kiwi at this point, Depeche. If I'm playing Aussie, it's through Euro Aussie. Uh, haven't really been a fan of Aussie dollar price action over the last, I don't know, a couple of days. Actually, the last couple of weeks even. Uh, it had its chance to make the breakout last week and didn't. So I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of it. Like I said, Euro Oz has been a really good divergence. Keep in mind, much wider ATR, uh, 32. Right now, you're looking at 34 pips per scalp, so a much wider range. And um, this is on the Euro dollar, right? Euro Aussie actually gives you a range of like 59 pips last night. It was about 60. So if there's an Aussie pair I'd play, that'd probably be it. Uh, Sterling Oz is coming into a very great uh, area of interest here as well. So Depeche, we can still play the commodity block, but you want to pick and choose what you're playing against. Uh, Mark says, Euro dollar looking for 12.92, two three six from the entire move down from 140. Also the 618 from the latest move up at 12.84. I see what you're saying. So this retracement here. Yeah, here's the thing. Uh, Mark, I just want to make this a note. This is just a personal thing that I'm talking about, but uh, I tend not to like taking fibs uh, off of stretch emotional um, spike highs like this. Uh, they're, you know, especially what we saw earlier on Monday, it was amid thin liquidity markets. Um, you know, it was definitely exaggerated, right? Because you saw stocks, I mean, 1,000 points on the Dow is, is no, you know, is no small feat. So I tend not to really like taking fibs off of spike highs. Mark says, oh, right. So you see what I'm saying? So that's the problem. If you notice, a lot of the setups I've been working on actually 
omit that retracement that you're talking about off the lows for that very reason. Another thing, Mark, is when we tack on the retracement, I want to see that the levels historically have offered some sort of pivot in price. And when you do that, here, we'll do it together. And when you do that on this pair, um, you don't really see that with as much conviction, right? So your 236 uh, or 38.2, kind of messy. Uh, the 50% sure, we already had that highlighted though, so it's irrespective. The 618, uh, it's a key level. You'd expect to see a little bit more than that. So I'm just not gonna stress it. There is a retracement that I tacked on on Eurowaz, okay? Um, and that one I used the high day close mark, and it's actually been offering some really, really nice levels. So I'll take a look at that in a moment. But uh, any questions here on Euro? Downside's at risk as we speak. The immediate downside bias is at risk above this highlighted region. A break below the 200-day moving average, and um, I think your targets are right on tap, Mark. You'd look for 12.92. That'd be, in my humble opinion, that would be actually um, a conservative target. If we break 13.23, 200-day moving average has offered some major run-throughs on the euro. If they take it back to the daily chart, uh, first of all, this is the first time we've touched it since this time last year, and it's been some nice pivots, and when you do break it, you tend to get a little bit more of a run. So we'll look for more critical support here for the euro at that 200-day moving average confluence with the median line. So from a scalping perspective, we'll be looking for long triggers down there. If we break below it, we'll look to sell rallies, and we'll have a much deeper move, in my opinion, like I said, if you make it below that 200-day moving average. Uh, Mark says, half... Uh, have half position long here, but uh, would like to add more. Yes, it's all about the fibs fit understand. Okay, he gets that cool too. Um, so for the long side of the euro, yeah, I think you know I'm looking for a trigger. Here's what it looks like um, on the five minute charts. Uh, euro dollar. No, oh, here it is. Oop, nobody wants to see that. Okay, so this is actually a one-minute chart, guys, and this is um, the triggers that I was actually working with last night. So I kind of just wanted to point out a couple of the uh, of the triggers that put us in uh, for the short side of the trade. You know, this was one of them heading into the Asia Open. Uh, you saw momentum hold 60 like a rock, trigger break to the downside. You had a really good swing high to trade against, uh, and you're looking for about 60 pips. So that yielded a really nice move. On the downside, where we phased out, there was a topside trigger that gave out. You tested a support that held. So you're looking for another rally to sell. And while momentum here did break, while momentum here did break 60, what would we do in, moment, in the uh, oscillator? You put in some divergence. Higher high in price, lower high in the oscillator. Four-point touch trigger, break. That's going to be another short right against the London high. So some really nice opportunities and real nice triggers here in the uh, in the Euro Oz. The last trigger that came was sort of this one right here. Wasn't the cleanest break, and it was kind of late in the session here. Probably wouldn't have operated on this one even if uh, even if we were watching it, just because there's not really a stop to put your your trade against. Uh, but here's the subsequent drop down. So we'll be looking to see if that holds as support near term. Uh, for the euro. All right, but Mark, the only thing I wanted to point out is again, you know, you're seeing that 60 hold is resistance, multiple breaks into oversold territory. These are all indicative of pretty strong near term short or bear markets. Um, and not omitting the five minute chart. I mean, even once you get into the trade, go ahead and jump back into the five, see if there are any compelling triggers that are in view. Uh, for example, here's a whoops, did not mean to do that. For example, here is a compelling resistance trigger I was watching uh, to omit the short side of the trade. So as you head into the U.S. trade session, you see a top side break above 30, which is in and of itself a near-term trigger. But you make it through the trend line, you look for a little bit more of substantiated rally, look to sell at 14.65. Like I said in the uh, note from yesterday, guys, inevitably we would be looking to buy this rally. Okay, um, it's we have to keep in mind the broader structure is all I want to say. So it's been respecting all the bullish median lines that we've been following. Um, the broader median line, obviously here that we 
uh, broke below. We tested that as perfect resistance on that rally on Monday. It was a 2.6.8 extension. Um, and certainly this was, you know, a major change in behavior. It's the highest RSI reading we've seen in Euro this year. In fact, that's the highest RSI reading we've seen in Euro since 2013. So just want to keep in mind the broader picture here. We are on the short side. Yes, we've been scalping the short side for the Euro, but inevitably we'd be looking for uh, a little bit more of a key reversal to get back on the longs. Uh, Mark says, I know you don't like scaling in. Good point. Mark, yeah, it's not that I don't yeah, I don't like scaling into a loser is my uh, is my problem. I will scale into a winner. And I know that brings your average rate down, but there's no problem in adding, adding position size if the trade is going well. So, for example, if we break this, there's a major break in, 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 uh, in momentum, and we get a rebound back into that region, I'll go ahead and add to a short position if I'm holding one. But, uh, you know, if the market comes against me and I continue to add on it, it's a quick way to get compounding losses, Mark. And the only reason I say it, man, is because I've been there and I've done that before and I've made a big mess of things. So, um, <laughs> like the old man always said, nah, it's not a shame to make a mistake, but it's a shame to make the same mistake twice. So, I just want to take a quick look at what this extension looks like at this point. Ooh, okay, so we got the 618. Ooh, that's really nice. Okay, so you got the 618 extension right there. We're testing that now as support. Look where the 100 is. Right not in line with that swing high, that pivot that we were looking at at 13, at 112, 38 rather. So even more conviction on the levels. Um, you could, may have some formation here, a median line off the high also now in view all right looks pretty clean and again with this fib we are using the swing high right but with the retracement off the lows it's a whole different animal so the sheer magnitude all you're measuring here is the sheer magnitude the drop in the length of the range so the extensions i'll uh, be a little bit more forgiving with but either way key region of support here near term as momentum tests support heading into the us open hey mark you're more than welcome man Always uh, appreciate the back and forth there. All right, so next up on tap, a little bit long uh, discussion there on the Euro guys, but it's probably been one of our favorite setups alongside the Euro Aussie, which we'll cover in a moment. Actually, we should probably do that first ahead of dollar and yen. So here's Euro Oz and uh, what that looked like last night. I actually featured a little piece on this on, excuse me, on Daily FX. Um, just featuring the basic setup, the Daily FX, we were still looking on the long side overnight. We actually switched that bias and took uh, I took a scalp back on the short side, as I noted in yesterday's piece. So here's what we look like on the <clears throat> on the Euro Oz last night. Here's what Euro Oz looks like right now. All right, so. Yesterday's piece on daily effects, here's what we look like. We were trading within the confines of this descending channel formation. We were coming into major key support and the range in focus on this one, here's a pure example, Mark, of where we use the retracement off that spike high with a little bit more of a, of a twist. So a retracement off the low into the high day close, which was 62.24, um, was sort of the range in focus. So this was resistance and near term bearish invalidation. Uh, this is support and near term bullish invalidation. In the meantime, we're playing inside the range. So you had a trigger break. Um, we didn't see the break in price. So I actually didn't take this trade until a while later once price actually broke through. Uh, you're looking for a nice wide range, 60 pips at this point, 61 pips should suffice per scalp. And you're looking for a rally into the HDC. You got it. Um, and then after the open of Tokyo, you saw this thing drop down and then come right back into that median line parallel that we highlighted on the intraday charts yesterday, okay? And that was the second, was the entry for the short. Didn't do anything up here. This was the entry for the short, okay? Again, on a five minute trigger, on a, on a, on a one minute trigger specifically, uh, it was a beautiful setup.
So let me show you this one first. This is the one that panned out the best in Europe. If you're trading European markets, this was the most compelling um, setup. Why? Because the momentum signature finally made it and confirmed the turn and down bias. You're an overbought, you're an overbought, you're getting divergence, but as long as we continue to see these types of developments, this is all constructive until you break 40. The break below 40 saw a rebound hold at 60. It's exactly what you wanted to see. Some divergence into the highs, price action higher high, oscillator lower high, trigger break, stop against the high, you're looking for about 60 pips, you're well on your way there. Okay, at this point, here's a resistance trigger that just gave out. So expect a bounce, okay? Again, we look at the median line parallel for resistance. If you don't get a short trigger into this and it breaks through, we'll continue to watch and play this near-term range. It's all about this range for the next however long it sticks until we break. Um, and I think the daily chart's pretty clear on that as well. If you look at this, 58.30 is that high from last year. So it's the 2014 stretch high. It's also the upper median line parallel and the exact lows we grounded into yesterday. So near term, the broader picture is constructive above this. It's really important to have the longer term view in play, guys. Uh, Mark, are you in the room? Mark McDowell? I think he's in... Uh, Aussie lands. I don't think he makes it up here, but uh, Mark was asking on Twitter yesterday. He said, you know, aren't you, weren't you saying that you were constructive on the Aussie key and we were construct or the Euro Oz and we're constructive based on this setup, just on that key level needs to break to invalidate the broader setup. It doesn't necessarily mean we're not taking short scalps. Um, he was also saying, hey, if this is a hammer, shouldn't that be bearish? And again, intraday, those kind of developments are not going to stop you from taking a scalp. If you're at support and I'm looking for a 30 pip run to the upside, I don't care that the previous day was a hammer or a doji or uh, you know any of those formations in, in general. So just keep in mind what we're trying to do here in the objective. Um, so if 40 continues to hold the support, we needed to see that break to really validate the turn. Um, you know, at this point, you might see a little bit more of a rally. As long as we stay below that median line, upper median line parallel, we'll look to favor the short side for your Oz. We need to break below here to confirm the broader trend change from the daily chart. Guys, does that make sense? I'm trying to walk you through sort of, you know, how we're approaching these setups. Any questions, feel free to throw it on out. Um, yeah, Raj, we'll definitely look at Sterling. <clears throat> Uh, is Euro finding support here? Where is the dollar? Where is the USD resistance? Uh, Raj, I'm sorry I missed your, your question there. So when you're saying where is the dollar resistance on the index is right here, 11,942, right? We went over that over earlier in the session. For the Euro dollar, yes, we are testing near-term support as we speak. So is Euro Oz. But a quick look back at Euro dollar. Uh, this is a major near-term support structure. All right, Raj, so let me know if you have any questions on that. Uh, Mark says, I have, I really have to appreciate all the work you do with HDC, weekly, monthly, yearly, opens, fibs, forks, a lot of work each day. <laughs> I appreciate that, Mark. It is a lot of work each day, but, um, you know, this is what we live for. So uh, I'm glad that you're benefiting off it, and hopefully it's been uh, a great benefit to your trade. So moving right along. Uh, last thing we want to go over from yesterday's setup, if there's no other questions on Euro Oz, is the dollar yen. Uh, another one I had exchanged with one of you on Twitter on for a while with um, you know some questions on the bias here as well. Look, so for the the dollar yen, yes, you know that. First of all, not all the circles are going to be targets per se. Some of them are going to be invalidation levels. And for the dollar yen, that's exactly what this is. Yeah, I'm expecting to see that we could see a rally there, and I noted that in the report, but. This is the bearish invalidation. So while you might be in a long scalp, as you head into that region, you're looking for short triggers, you're looking for resistance, you're looking for a turnover and momentum. Here's what dollar yen looks like now. All right. So all we did was rally into that uh, 119.86 region. Uh, we're still holding that as resistance. Take note of the slope or the trend line resistance, a basic trend line resistance off the highs is there as well. If we break through that, we're going to be right on target to run into that 120, 80, 121 region. And this is where we'd start to look for resistance. And this is what would also invalidate 
the short bias that we're working on. So, you know, keep in mind, dollar yen has had quite the run. Um, there's that same level again, 1982, um, 119. Uh, 88 turns out to be the actual yearly open for 2015. So a nice pivot in price, a top side break there. You're basically looking for 120.70, and that's going to be a very clear cut target. You're looking at the upper or the median line, excuse me, off the highs. And again, that 200 day moving average here comes into focus right along that level. Eileen says the sound is going out every now and then. Anyone else having that problem, guys? Okay, thanks. I will uh I will definitely look into that. Okay, says so sometimes it goes out for a few seconds. Thanks, uh Mark. Yeah, I'm looking into it right now. It might be a just a little bit way on resources here. We're in the FXCM office, so it's not uh, <laughs> it's not my setup here. Um, but at any event, I will uh, hopefully that will help there, guys. Let me know if it keeps on going, if it keeps on happening. Okay, I just want to take a quick look at um, you know what's been going on in the equity markets. You know, Jamie will be on later today with his midweek strategy webinar. Um, you know, he spent a lot of time looking at. And if you've noticed, his uh, the, the the swing update has had a lot of charts on the Nikkei, has had a lot of charts on the on the SPY or the S&P index, and there's a reason for that. The correlations right now are starting to become pretty tight with some of these major pairs: dollar yen, euro dollar, um, the inverse yen uh, dollar, I guess you would say, uh, with the S&P is almost in lockstep right now. So he's going to go over uh, that later today in the midweek strategy webinar with a little bit more detail on why he's spending time uh, looking at the equity markets, is because it can be a very strong tell when we're looking at some of these major pairs. And certainly on the swings, as those come into major key support or resistance, even if it doesn't prompt a move, it can sometimes keep you out of a position, tell you, you know what, SPY is at a major key support or vice versa, maybe we should be looking not to chase this move here. So I'll leave that to him later today, but any questions on the dollar yen? So heading into the US session, the immediate focus is on that resistance at 119.86. Um, a quick look at the equity markets. Like I said, here's what we look like so far across the board. Quick refresh there on the dollar performance, but um, here's what it looks like across the board right now. Europe in the red. You saw that Asia had a really radical session. The Shanghai Composite ended up down 1.27%, but boy, did we see some swings. Here's what the intraday session looked like. You start off in negative, you made it back in ter positive territory, you went way negative, huge massive swings through the session, and you closed down again. Equity futures here in the United States look to be poised to open stronger across the board. Dow is looking up 350 points before the open here, S&P up about 45. So he says, is he looking to short the SPX? Raj, I'm not going to speak on uh, Jamie's behalf. I'm going to leave that to him later today. Uh, I can tell you that the SPX did come into an interesting level of support. So at this point, I don't know if you'd be looking to press the short uh, per se yet, but I can tell you my take on things. Um, real quick, I do want to just take a look at the five-minute chart or the one-minute. Oh, here's another uh, couple of triggers on the one-minute uh, for dollar-yen. 78, the high was 91, you're looking for about 30 pips. You would have still been in that trigger, but the more operative one was this one that came off the lows with a stop against the highs there. Um, you need to see, even on a one-minute chart, you can see that we haven't, since the low that you made there in uh, early London, you haven't seen a 40 break in momentum, and you have seen multiple 60 breaks over bought signals, so that's a tell on near-term momentum. As far as the five-minute chart's concerned, that's the operative trigger I'm working on and looking for heading into the U.S. Open. Noticing that you're getting some divergence into the highs. We'll see if that level of resistance holds. 
uh, Raj saying, Mike, do you think Euro dollar will go up to 120 from here on? Yeah, see, I don't trade like that, Raj, right? I don't, you know, I'm not going to start positioning for um, a move like that from down here. You know, I'm much more shorter term. That's just my style of trading. It's my personality. Um, you know, I like to load up on the leverage a little bit heavier than expected, so I don't, you know, I can't put a stop like that. But calling a low Raj is a very difficult thing to do. Okay, so let me let me restate your question. He's saying I was thinking longer term, just a question, right? So, do I think we'll see 120? Yes, yes. Do I think we'll see 120 from this low right here? No, not necessarily, right? We could we could take another dive lower real quick, test 1320, even uh, even 11250 before we turn around. So, Raj, my my question to you, or I post I postulate to you is this: you know, knowing direction is only 50% of the game, literally. Having a strategy for entry, exit, and risk management is the other 50%. So do I think that the broader dollar, euro dollar move is 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 maybe uh, to see this resumption higher after we've broken these long-term trend lines? Yes. Um, you know, do, do I have a way of positioning for that move into 120 from down here? Probably not. Probably not. Again, as a disclaimer, we're out on all those uh, on all those positions, the euro Oz and the euro dollar at this point. So we'll look for a re-entry on both of those positions heading into U.S. Open. Ross saying, Mike, why does the market always retrace so far down before next leg up? I get caught as I as going long on the initial pullback. Um, if you're finding that, Raj, I really would question your entries. What's prompting the entry? You know, you're asking a question of why markets are moving. I can't tell you that, Raj. I can tell you if there's buyers and sellers and gyrations in market breed opportunity. Without opportunity, we have nothing, right? So we love this volatility. Um, I would question how you're actually triggering the entries for the position. Uh, if you're chasing the move, that's probably a big, big initial problem, which is what a lot of people will say, you know, they end up getting high at the, they, they end up getting long at the highs and they end up getting short at the lows. And that's because they see, you know, a rally like this, they get a small pullback. Now they're long again. And then the market reverses. Well, what prompted this entry? You know, if you're scalping, yeah, this is a great scalp from here to here. This is 6080 into 6270. Sure. But if you're looking for resumption of the broader uptrend, this is a horrible entry. Right, so we got to make sure we we're, we keep in context what we're trying to do, Raj. Um, and in these volatile markets, expect deeper pullbacks, expect you know uh, longer stretches on breakouts. That's just the the, the environment that you're in. Uh, Dan's enjoying <laughs> this discussion. Raj saying, for example, Euro dollar made it higher than pulled back, and I went long and got stopped out. I guess that was a perfect example I just pointed out there, right, Raj? Look at your entries, man. Take a look at the entries on what, what's triggering these positions. And also, Raj, make sure that your profit targets are realistic. If you're getting uh, long on a pullback here, trying to play the long, you really shouldn't have a stop that's too far out below that region. You're at support. Okay? Uh, so even if you do end up playing a bounce that just fizzles out, you know, we're looking for 34 pips. As you hit 34 pips, we got to wrap up the trade or at least lighten the load, bring your stop to break even. It's really important that we do that. Um, Mark says, and you have to be okay with a, with big stops. Yeah, and if you're positioning, like Mark is saying, Raj, if you're positioning for a longer term move, you're looking for that rally into 120, um, you know, you need to be able to be able to push out your stops as well. I'm not gonna necessarily be a fan of, of keeping them too big, but you get the picture. Uh, I hope that helps, Raj. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions on that. Okay, so. We've gone over Euro dollar, dollar yen, Euro Oz. I want to go into your questions. I saw a question on the British pound. Here's what the pound is doing. And man, man, oh man. We waited for 57 for how many days? How many weeks? Excuse me, how many months? Okay, since the 15th of last year, of last year, of last month. So a little over a month. Here's the 56, uh, 80 into 57 handle. We've been looking as resistance. We closed the month checking it. Tried again earlier this month. We broke through. 
and we reversed the next day. Look at where, on a closed basis, this thing capped out. That's the high day close for May. And if you bring it into a line chart, you can see an exact rebound off that region. Also, it was the median line off the lows. This, so we came right into it, reversed, we closed at 57 or just below 57 yesterday, which invalidated the long buys, wasn't still courageous enough to take the short, obviously hindsight's 2020, but the close below 57 invalidated the long side, and here's the resultant drop. Momentum is coming into an area of support, I don't want to stress that, but we'll have to see this thing close below that lower median line parallel, and if you do get it, you know, I think it's going to be uh, tough times for the pound, guys. You know, keep in mind the momentum signature turned right at 60. Not very bullish. Not very bullish at all. Uh, Mark saying, "Arg, Mr. Jamie mentioned 57.90 two months ago. Didn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. In fact, he called it a couple of days ago. I think it's on the daily charts if you guys check out. Uh, 57.90 was a really, really important level to get down. Uh, on the short side for this. So here's what the intraday chart looks like for the pound. Okay, so there's that formation. This is a broader formation off the lows. There's that median line structure we were looking at on the daily chart. And that median line off the lows coincided with the weekly opening range low. And that break, objectively, objectively, irrespective of what I think or you think, is uh, you know a bearish, a bearish signal. So while near term, you might catch some upside just off this region, um, you know, it doesn't look like we're gonna ha we're gonna be too constructive on the pound here anytime soon. Don't have any pound scalps that I've really been operating on, guys. We'll take a look tonight. Maybe we'll have one in play. But um, Initial price action here to start off the uh, the week has not been constructive. If this is just a correction, you would expect to find some support here, but A break below, you've got targets down at uh, 55.35, 55.28. That was a really nice pivot back uh, earlier this month. And then a 618 takes you into 59.40. Keep in mind here, you're looking at a little bit tighter of an ATR, which is why I'm still favoring the euro and the euro crosses. Uh, a little bit more juice, um, a juice to squeeze there. You got about 28 pips here, so euro is a little bit higher right now at 34 pips. I think that picture is a little clearer. But generally speaking, the pound. Um, looking lower, looking lower. You know, again, the immediate buy is heading to the U.S. Opens, probably to see a little bit more of an upward rebound. But broadly speaking, it still looks pretty bearish. So you'd look for resistance right around here. <clears throat> So Raj, I mean, that's what I would say. I Again, not a favorite pair of mine, so not at this point, um, but this is sort of the structure I've been following, and this is what we'll be looking at. We'll have to see, like I said, that close below the lower median line parallel. Uh, your, uh, Andrew says, your view on sterling yen, I'm short 187.92. Um, sterling yen, sterling yen. Let's take a look for Andy here. Short from 187.92, nice entry. Ooh, beautiful entry, beautiful entry. Momentum, huge shift, and the clearest probably here, guys, um, example of a change in behavior for momentum. And you hear me and Jamie say this all the time, but you know it's hard sometimes to conceptualize it. This is a perfect example. You start off the year off the lows, you find some support at 40, resistance at 60, you're still not seeing the breakout, support at 40, you're in a ranging market. 60 break, shifts the focus higher, okay? Um, Overbought conditions, as bullish as it gets. You're still bullish, you're still bullish, you're still bullish. On the way down, a quick 60 drop, 
that's not what gets you bearish yet. That's a warning. That's a shot across the bow. It's the rally and hold into 60. Now, if that 60 level holds and you see the 40 break subsequent, it confirms the turn in momentum. And I think that's what we've seen here. So while sterling yen, I do think, is a broadly bullish trade long, long term, um, just in the di divergence in monetary policy from the fundamental stance, uh, near term, you have to be bearish below that median line that we tested again as resistance today. And that median line is almost exactly where you got in, Andrew. You got even better entry on it. So looking at it from the daily standpoint, 60 hold in momentum, 40 break, yeah, uh, I'd have to say Broadly speaking, we could see this thing move lower. Near term, let's check out the scalp. Uh, give me a minute, Andy. I haven't actually looked at this recently this week. So... First thing I want to take into account is a quick extension off the high there to see if that's completed any major FIB ratios. Okay, so the 100, still far off. This retracement, null and void. Yeah, so this is what I would have to tell you on, on this, Andrew. Uh, you're in consolidation, plain and simple, uh, but you're consolidating below that lower median line parallel. So in fact, I'd have to say like sub 87.80, um, I'd still be looking lower. Sort of exactly where we peaked today and where you got short. This, this this spot right here, this would be my bearish invalidation near term. Uh, a downside break, well, first of all, I know we sailed through this, but I'd still respect that 50% retracement off the low. It's a longer term retracement, 85.35. Uh, the 100 that we just added, like I said, comes in at 84.40. You have the 2008 move give you a 50% retracement 83.95. So you have the clear cut targets on the downside, pretty wide ATR, about 50 pips. But as long as you stay below the Asia low, or I guess this is the uh, London Asia high rather, as long as you stay below that, um, you know, I'd have to say that I'm, I'm still going to favor the downside. The only caveat is, like I said, you've had a couple of downside stretches here. Momentum is sort of waning. So you might get a pop higher first. You might offer a nice entry to get back on the short side there near the near the uh, Sunday Asia opening range low. It takes things like 90 30, 90 25. That might be another area to start back on the short side. But um, yeah, tight contracting range here with momentum still holding sub 60, multiple breaks sub 40, but you're seeing that can start to consolidate as well. So Andrew, does that help? I hope that offers some clarity for you. Love the entry. I would be watching that support that we're trying to break below. Uh, if you want to lighten the load a little bit, uh, put a stop just above that high from London, or at least, um, you know, if that's going to be inside the profits for you, maybe even take uh, take a little bit more on the table if we if we break through that. But broadly speaking, I do like it. He says, Andrew uh, says, thank you. You got it. And it adds a little bit more validation to that 85.36 level. Okay. And that is uh, sterling yen. We covered sterling dollar. What else did I have written down? Let's see. Oh, I just wanted to touch on gold real quick because we actually did see the material, uh, the pullback that we were looking for materialize over the last couple of days. Uh, and that's now breaking a near-term support structure. 
again, uh, this is the opening range high. So while we did highlight 1130 as a major key area of resistance, now support to 618 extension off the high. It's also the swing low from November and a basic trend line support just off the low for the month. Um, we'll have to see today's close and uh, that'll kind of give us the validation for the medium term objective here. But objectively, what I just wanted to highlight here in the webinar is that we are testing the opening range high for the month. Okay, so if this is your monthly opening range high set in the first 12 days, you came back, you plowed through it here on the 19th, you should look for some support right in the region that we're testing right now. Okay, and again, keeping in mind the broader weekly chart that we've been following, this is a pretty big region of resistance, right? That's the upper median line parallel. We just missed it by a couple of cents, but big, big area. So here's the first tell on whether this is just an upside spike or whether we're going to see a little bit more of a material shift in gold prices. Eileen says, what are you thinking for Sterling Oz? Uh, here's what the Sterling Oz charts look like, Eileen. I haven't really gotten involved with this one either. Just because Euro Oz, Sterling Oz, I think is kind of an overlap, so I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. But here's what the daily chart looks like. The upward spike taking into that um, 618, 222.18 was pretty huge for me. And a lot of these markets, guys, have, again, we don't want to be calling a high, but sort of have that feel where, you know, the emotional spike or the magnitude of the size of the trade that we saw on Monday might have put something pretty big in. You know, uh, 2176, uh, 222, 18, a nice area of resistance. You had the upper median line parallel there. Uh, this was a measured move for um, sort of the consolidation range that we held for a good four weeks. So the fact that momentum held 70 as resistance, you're getting divergence on the, the last couple of highs is a tell that... Um, you want to be a little bit more cautious. And if the sterling turnaround does materialize, the problem with this trade, Eileen, is that, um, you know, what's the word? I'm bearish Euro uh, or Aussie and sterling. So I don't necessarily know if you'll get a definitive clear cut directional bias. If anything, I see, I think you see a little bit more chop up there. Um, sterling losses may accelerate and top those of, of, of the Aussie if we do finally see that sterling close below that median line we talked about earlier. But for sterling Oz, it's just such a big range that the ramifications of a wrong scalp are going to be pretty big, even if you lighten the load. And um, you know, I just don't think we have that directional clarity yet, Eileen. So I don't really have anything near term to play on sterling Oz. Um, I can tell you that the only thing I'm focused on is if we see a break back below 216.90. Um, it might be worth a shot to play it back into the uh, monthly opening range, which was last month's high. But other than that, it's just a hunch that this thing might turn over and give us a little bit bigger of a pull back to the downside. Does that make sense? Eileen says, okay, I see that. Awesome. Says yes. Okay. All right, guys, so if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, Jamie will be on at 1 p.m. Eastern with his midweek strategy webinar to go over uh, the little bit larger of a range setups, what we're looking at, and the broader themes that we've been covering. Uh, and guys, we'll be back on board tomorrow morning, 8.30, same time, same channel, uh, to wrap up the week and uh, give us another update as we close out uh, an amazing and historic week here in markets guys wall street's like it's insane uh it's the, everything every time every time you walk by there's just all sorts of commotion and certainly you know the volatility that we've seen guys is not likely that it's going to go away you might see it dim down a little bit markets get a hangover after such a move like this but um you know we want to make sure that we're ready and poised to take advantage of these moves i will take this question real quick uh mark dollar cad probably turned down soon i took my first long since the long time so everyone's looking at dollar cad um, Jamie was giving a couple of tweets <laughs> um, with one of you guys last night. Look, you know, I don't really want to mess with this thing too much. I think that you really look for a 1345, 1350 target at minimum at this point. You know, it's it's interesting because even on the dollar pullbacks, dollar cad doesn't really want to participate. 
And while you did see the last couple of days start off on a weaker footing, uh, you know, every time we came into this region, which was the high day close previous to the breakout, you know, we found support. And we even closed back above it, tested the lower median line parallel today. Ongoing divergence doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know, you can get ongoing divergence for a couple of weeks to a couple of months uh, before you actually see uh, a play off it. So I don't have anything on this. And it's frustrating because, yeah, it's like a train that just keeps going up. The intraday picture is chop fest. So if you're looking for a scalp, you know, this is probably not the pair that you want to be most uh, active in. Um, just because, oof, the moves have been sudden and sharp. You're looking at 35 pip quarterly uh, ATR range there. So we'll pick things back up again tomorrow. Guys, best of luck trading, and I will see you then.